them. Feet firmly on the floor away from those pedals. Hand away from the control column. I may need to use full stick, full control column, so keep your hand away from it. Do not touch any of the levers on the left-hand side. In fact, don't touch anything when I'm flying. I will take the aircraft up to level attitude. I will level off, then I'll invite you to come to the controls. The control column will be there. Yeah. Just two fingers and one thumb, no more. And then I will show you how to fly the aircraft, describe what's going on, and I will say to you eventually, when you've understood it, you have control. And you'll say to me, I have control. You're then flying the aircraft, okay? okay? But if at any time I want control back, I will say, I have control. You take your hands off immediately, and you say, you have control. Okay? If I can't communicate with you, but I want control, I would do this with a stick, and that means get your hands off. <laughs> okay? All right, Rennie, we're going to go flying now. Yeah, so, right. let's go. Brilliant. Tango's taxiing for 2 2. Come on board, 30 minute flight. 1009. Thank you, next is now 1008, um, uh, but it's still 2 2 left. We've got a service wind gusting uh, up to 2 1 at this time. Yeah, I've got, I've got Tango to wear of that. Oh, we're going to probably do two more flights and then contain it for the day because it seems to be picking up all the time. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm doing now, making sure we have oil pressure, we have plenty of full. Magnetos okay, trim, and set, you're strapped in. Yep. I'm strapped in. Which is okay. And oh, we like that. Was it not too stormy the first flight? Say again? Was the flight not too stormy with Steve? Uh, no, he's, it was pretty nice, he enjoyed it, this little bit of turbulence around it, he really, really enjoyed it, you know. He came out and said, um, you know, maybe I'm going to take the... Love station, call your station, can you pick call for please? Really loved it. Yeah, I bet he does. Heli 83, safe for the radio, uh, pass the message. I've got a big short form for you, uh, now we've got the stuff. Uh, we'll see if, uh, we'll find the sign. Golf Golf for Tango's Airborne up a 2 0. Wow. Really, that feels cool. Feel some gusts coming around, catching us as we go up. Five zero left, left hand circuit, Q-Nate, one zero zero eight. Two to left, left hand, one zero zero eight, five one seven, thank you, Q-Nate. Tango is leaving the second, initially to the southwest, and climbing to 1700 feet, so call rejoining. That's what I've got, Tango. 
So they've got a fantastic view. If you look out just to the right of the nose of the aircraft, you can see the, the uh, dome there, and Canary Wharf, and the whole of London City, all the tall buildings laid out there. Uh, we're just coming up, going to climb up to a little bit more height. There is some turbulence, but I'm going to get up a little bit more height, then I'm going to level off and invite you to come on the controls, all right? Yes. Well, the, view, the view outside these little showers is quite good. I you think it's amazing. It's a wonderful experience in one of these aircraft. It is. It really feels so cool, man. See so the River Thames snaking off down right the way ahead of us, going down through the city of London, going down to the left. If you look over to the right, you can see uh, where the storms are quite active on my right-hand side over there in the distance. All right. Same to the left, you've got one or two little storms there, which is what's kicking us about a little bit up here. Yeah, I think we're lucky with the weather. The sun is shining on us. Yeah, I think so. But it's such a good feeling just being on yourself up here instead of a big plane. Yeah, it's different altogether, isn't it? Absolutely. An antique aeroplane like this, 70 years old. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful aeroplane, this Tiger Bomber. And a lot of affection for this aeroplane, you know. Well, I can understand. It's it. an old aeroplane, but it's got soul, you know. Yeah. She's a lady. She's a real lady. Got to be treated with gentle finesse. Okay, I'm going to get you to come on the controls with me. Two fingers and one thumb. Don't try flying the aircraft at this moment. Just follow through with me while I describe what's going on. Okay. Okay. We look out the front of the aircraft, and we can see where the horizon is in the position at the moment, roughly halfway up the windscreen. Yes. Look where the cross-bracing wires are. Yes. Note and remember that position. When you're flying the aircraft, Rene, yes. this is what you want to see. Now, the aircraft will try to buck and pitch around. It'll want to pitch up like that, and it'll want to pitch down. All the time, you have to make small corrections to hold it there like that. Now, if I pull back gently on the control column, you can see when the nose pitches up above the horizon, the houses, trees, the fields all start to get smaller, okay? Yes. The reverse is true. If I ease forward, the nose pitches down, bigger houses, bigger trees, bigger fields. So I'm going to bring the aircraft back to the level attitude and just hold it there. Okay, Ronnie. Now, just pick a point ahead to keep straight and just try holding it there for a moment or two. Yeah. You have control. Gently, 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 gently. Don't snatch the control column. Very gentle. Ease forward and hold it there gently. No more than that. That's all you need to do. Very gentle. If there's a big bump, I will shout, I have control. Don't try to force the aircraft to do anything. It's all got to be very, very gentle. That's good. That's good. Gently, gently, gently. Try and hold that attitude. I'm coming back on the controls with you now, so just follow through with me while we turn the aircraft. I'm just gaining a little bit of height there, so I'm having to throttle back a bit. Okay. We're going to turn to the left. What we do, Ren, if we want to turn to the left, we look out, make sure there's nobody there. Then we move the control column to the left. The aircraft will bank to the left. When we've got the desired bank attitude about there, we centralise, and the aircraft continues to turn. Oh, I want to roll the wings back to level again, and I finish my turn. I move the column in the opposite direction till the wings are level. Picture in the window is level and centralised. Okay, you have control. Gently hold it steady. Don't let those pitch up. Must hold it on the horizon all the time. Very small movements. Too big a movement. Sorry. What's happening is you're over controlling. So yeah. you're doing this, okay? Okay. Now follow through and feel with me what I'm doing. See how the difference is that I'm making very tiny, tiny little movements all the time to overcome these gusts. Very small, that's all. Try that yourself. My hands are close to the control column if you need them. Not everybody can do this. Uh. No, it's too much. Very, got to be very gentle with it. Uh. So, what we have to do is look at that picture, just follow through with me. If you find it hard, just let me do the flying, but keep your hand on the control column, okay? Yes. And feel what I'm doing. I am having to counteract for the wind. 
continuously with very small movements. Now, modern aircraft, you wouldn't have to do this, but for this particular type of aeroplane, or this sort of vintage, you have to fly it all of the time. Yeah. There's no time you can take your hands off, and the aircraft demands accuracy. Now, I think I will be happier if you fly the plane. Okay, well, you can keep your hand on the controls, oh, doing that, and you yes. can feel what I'm doing, and that way we're just going to fly around and have a nice flight and see what's going on. I know. <coughs> And we've got a big cloud coming up ahead of us. You can see that big the cloud. Dark, and we know when we get close to that cloud, there's going to be turbulence. Okay. And we know that. We can start feeling that turbulence kicking us around a little bit. We're also looking out for other aircraft when we're around here, Renault. So if you yeah. see another aircraft, the way we report it is always the nose of the aircraft is 12 o'clock, no matter which way we point it. In other words, we look to the right wing tip, that's 3 o'clock. We look to the left wing tip, that's 9 o'clock. So it's 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. And if you see another aircraft, because I might not necessarily see it, so I've got one on my left now in my 10 o'clock. You look out to the left, range about one mile, one wide aircraft, level with us, we're on a conflicting course, yeah. but this time there's no danger, so I can see where he is. Yeah. So we got him there. So it's very difficult to spot something like that in wide you, as well. It is at first, but when you get used to it, yeah. um, you're looking continuously all the time for uh, where these aircraft are. We can see that we're converging, but at this stage there's no risk of any conflict. How far or close do you have to be to be any conflict? Well, any conflict now, at this point here, I'm thinking about if he continues to turn, I'm going to turn to go around him. So what I do here is I now go to the left to pass behind that aircraft, and there is no risk of conflict now. He's now going away from me, and I watch him, and he now drifts away on my right. Can you see that? Yes. So now there's no risk of conflict. We're not converging anymore. In fact, we'll probably come round and follow him. <laughs> Maybe he knows something we don't. Uh, better away from the dark cloud there. <laughs> so we're just going to fly around gently. So he's turning left now, as you can see. So he's going away from us and moving away to our left, back into our 10 o'clock position. And you can see the M25 going all the way down towards the QE2 bridge. A River Thames snaking away on my right-hand side, going into London. If you look down to the right now, you can see right the way down to the Dome and Canary Wharf with the Thames going all the way down. There's a gorgeous sight from up here. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's beautiful. The aircraft is also very manoeuvrable, Rene. So I'm going to do a little turn to the right, <laughs> so you've got an idea of just how quickly you can turn in one of these aircraft. Just turning to the right now. If you look at the wingtip, you'll see that we're literally pirouetting round on one wingtip. It turns around to get the length of the aeroplane. Absolutely fantastic aeroplane, the Tiger Moth. Jesus. Wonderful machine. This is really... It is amazing that it can turn like it this. Is, it, it is, you know, we could turn steeper than that if we didn't have these sort of wind conditions, but uh, in those wind conditions, that's, that's as steep as I really like to turn, because it's a bit turbulent out here. Yeah. Throttling back again now. And you can see now below us, we've got Brentwood on our left. Ahead of us, the, as I say, the M25 snaking away. We've got one or two showers about. Yeah, I think of a, if I ever want to fly, I need to be in the confidence because I've never driven a car or anything like that. I'm not a very sort of mechanical type person, so I do love this. I mean, Steve absolutely loved it. Well, he's he, a car driver. He really is very, very good. He's got very, very good awareness. Yeah. And I said to him, I think you could learn to fly, and he said, wow, I really would love to do that. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has another go at some stage. Oh, I bet he will. 
Well, we don't like driving old uh, cars. We always had classic cars, and he does it himself, and they feel better. Well, this is a classic aeroplane, and, That's it. and you can feel the difference. Well, we always notice it when we drive around. People have a smile on their face when they see us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not because of us, it's the car. No. <laughs> and they look around, they say, because it's a proper, proper car. Proper car. I'm uh, afraid modern cars do everything very efficiently. But, but they're just nice. extremely boring. That's it. Our last one was a Volvo Sports, the Saint car. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I had one of those many years ago. Oh, Raising Green, ours was. Oh, mine was a sort of a creamy white colour. Oh, boy. And with, a, with the red seats. They were lovely, weren't they? Yeah. I had a couple of old 122s. I love them. Yeah. And we had the Amazon. Yeah. And they're built like a brick outhouse. That's it. You can uh, move it everywhere with them. But this is a different thing altogether, that's for sure. <laughs> and you're thinking really, this is really what was happening back... This, this aircraft was flying between the wars, between the wars, after the, after the First World War, before the Second World War. And all the way through the Second World War, it was teaching people to fly airplanes. You know, it might have been Spitfire pilots, it might have been... Well, we talked to one person once on an air show on the Spitfire, and I saw a program on the telly about them, and they were saying that this was the best flight to fly and to learn. Oh, absolutely. If I could teach people to fly in this now, as opposed to teaching them in uh, a modern Cessna, there would be much, much better pilots at the end of it all. Well, yes. There's people getting too lazy, all the pushing buttons and rubbish and all that, and yeah. they've got any idea what they see us. You also need to have, as one aircraft writes, and my right o'clock, one o'clock range, half a mile, right to left, slightly low. You got him? No. All right, <laughs> right on the nose now, straight below you. Oh yes. This is really difficult to spot. Why are planes wide with wide clouds? So difficult to spot, really, wouldn't they? Yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. So we've got him right in the windscreen now. If we hit the gun switch, yep. we've got him, I think. A little bit too far for a little bit of more deflection shooting here. But you can see how you can sneak up on people. And when you read about the dogfights, in one minute you can have ten aircraft in the sky together, and then you look round, you turn around, and then they're gone. That's true. Yeah, I've never thought about that. Yeah, that must be weird. These people who fought in the World War must have been so brave. Very much so. Very much so. But then I think all of us have that perhaps in us. Uh, of the, it's the, it's the uh, will to survive. If you give up, then you, you've had it. But you have to keep that will to survive all the time, you know. Well, I'll tell her, my grandmother lived through in Holland and she was in the underground type thing. Very, very brave people. Yeah, no, Knowing if you get it wrong, you get a bullet in the head and there was no two ways about it. Uh, Very brave people. They still have the bullet hole to show in Amsterdam in some parts. I know, I've been around, I've looked, and uh, you know, I very, very much admire uh, the Dutch resistance were very, very brave people because they were under occupation from earlier on. And their efforts actually turned the war around. Seriously. Well, that was, it was a big price to pay. Oh, very many people lost their lives from there. Very, very many people. See uh, the wonderful feeling of the aircraft literally just floating around. It, is, it feels like it doesn't feel like anything. Well, you know, you're <laughs> in this guy. It's like it's floating, you know. Or we're doing 70 knots, which is coming up for 80 miles an hour. And if you see now, you can just turn it quickly. Around we go, straight away. The aircraft will quite literally, we can go nice and steep now as we come round. Well we've done this sort of thing in a helicopter once and I felt sick. Yeah. And I don't feel with this. This is much, much easier I suppose in certain ways. Not uh, easier to fly but I mean it's a very different, it's more, more relaxing than in a rotary wing. Elegant with all that. Yeah. There's the town of Brentwood below us, and the, there's the main A12 that's sneaking down into London.
the start going back in the general direction of the airfield now. Do you remember where it is? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll turn around now. We're about nine miles to the east of the airfield now. In fact, I'm putting the nose of the aircraft bank slap onto. Uh, so it's right bank slap on the nose now. About nine and a, eight and a half miles away. Make a radio call. And we'll come overhead the field. Staplefoot Radio Golf Alpha Delta Golf Tango is eight miles to the east of the field. Rejoining for 221008. Power to Golf Golf Tango. It's the old wartime airfield of. Uh, Remember the name of it now, North Weald on my right, I can see that sneaking out. Now on the left you've got the uh, M25 again. You can see the strength of the wind drifting us along as we go. Yeah. So in actual fact, what I'm doing, I turn the aircraft left. I'm actually going towards the airfield now, but the aircraft is pointing at the airfield and I'm sort of allowing for the drift. I can feel the movement you make, it is really... A, uh... Very small, isn't it? Yeah. I don't ever play computer games either, so I'm a bit of joystick person. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't so much move it. I mean, sometimes at the slower speeds I may need to move it a little bit more. Uh, but it feels like something I could do, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Well, there'll be a lot of movement when we come down to land, because there's quite a bit of, quite a wind around today. And as we get lower to the lower levels, you'll start feeling that movement. At the moment, it's looking fine. Well, I love the roller coaster ride, so... <laughs> so I'm going to remind you... One or two things, <laughs> ready. When I'm coming into land from now onwards, I'd like you to take your hand off the control column. Right. Your feet away from the controls. Yeah. And when I land, the last little bits of the landing, keep your head bank slap in the centre, because I need to look out to the left to see where I'm going to land. So I'm just drifting down gently now, going towards the airfield. And we've got about uh, three miles to run to the overhead. Got, got tangos overhead descending dead side for 2-2. Two, two. Okay. We're going to struggle back gently, we're right overhead the airfield now descending. We're going to descend down to 1200 feet. On the pressure setting for the day.
Okay, all strapped in and comfortable, all's looking good. Sun is coming out. We hope so. <laughs> Oh god, Tango's downwind, too, too. Okay. Yeah, there's nobody else out there, so... Yankee X-ray, line it up, two to left. Okay, so it's going to take taking two one zero, gusting one five. So the radio is Golf Bravo, Juliet, which one's there? Golf Bravo, Tango's finals, two two, grass, contact one on and uh, one rolling. Rejoining bedside for runway 22. Stop to the inbound, yeah, it's ready, I've got a message. PA38 inbound, we're coming out of repping at 1300 feet, then on to do left on 1208. That's all correct. Oh, Golf Tango's, Golf Bravo Tango's short finals, 2 2 cross. Oh, Roger, Golf Bravo Tango, that's been great, KT. Stable food radio, Gold Cross to Fox Trot, back to the Pan Tanger now. Thank you. Back to the Pan Tanger, bye. Amazing. Can we go up again? <laughs> Did you enjoy that then? I love this. This is the best thing I've done for ages. I've got a turn around which is never that easy in these sort of wings. So. Yankee X-ray, departing the circuit to the south and call for rejoin. Right, stop Yankee X-ray. This must be such a satisfying job that people always... I bet everybody loves it, does it? There are a few that don't, but generally speaking, um, I, I get a tremendous thrill. I mean, basically I work for the company, I have worked for them for five years, mm. and I get to do what I love doing. I get to take people up in the fantastic aeroplanes, all around the country, and I get paid for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a bit of a nomad, I've n I could never work in an office, I tell I'm you. not that sort of person, you know, I've, I live my life at a very, very fast pace, but with antique aircraft and, cr and cars and motorbikes and all sorts of things, I'm not really interested, I was just born in the wrong area, you know? Yeah, well, you should talk to Steve with his BSA yeah. motorbike and yeah, all I'm his cars. And I love it, it's just, uh, that sort of thing is, is they're, there's just so much more satisfaction with them, you know, they're, they're just more fun, that's it, full stop. Well, I'll tell you, this was amazing, I loved it. I wouldn't be surprised to see you guys again, you know. <laughs> well, no, still we live not that far away anyway, so, yeah. in blimey. Yeah. And it's always great to have a really good hobby, what is it different? Yeah, I mean, this is something, I, I learned to fly back in the 1970s, and, uh, the first for a Tiger Moth in 1979, I fell in love, but I'd always wanted to fly a Tiger Moth, you know, that was, it had always been my dream, uh -huh. and uh, it was something I was going to do come hell or high water, you know. I've never thought about it, really, but it was... And I can't say the, the little planes like these ones, you know, these chestnuts and what have you, they do look yeah. oh, horrid, yeah. <laughs> 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 to take the through. <laughs> 
going to take it towards the fuel pumps now. Put some fuel in it. Uh, Steve's in a stage in Australia where he lived for a long time because uh, where they lived, uh, everybody had the plane to go to shopping and all that. Oh yeah, distances. Can we get 